change under conditions of nutritional deficiency, but that's secondary. <laughs> that's on top of the simplicity. Rule number two from Sir Isaac Newton. The causes assigned to natural effects of the same kind must be the same. That means if you're sick, it's going to have, no matter what the complexity tells you, whether it's your blood sugar, whether it's your thyroid, or whether it's, your, or whether it's an autoimmune disease of the nerves, or whether it's cancer, or whether, whatever it is, if you got a disease state, if you got a body that's out of kilter, the causes, as far as possible, have to be the same. I call that the triangle of disease. It underlies everything. I did a video on the triangle of disease. Go to criticalhealthnews.com and check it out. The triangle of disease is behind everything. No matter what the com complex symptom is on the surface, you're going to find the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. And at the level of a cell, you'll find another triangle. Starvation, suffocation, toxification. Later on, you might find a genetic mutation. True. You might find defective chemical processing somewhere in a cell. True. You might find a virus. You might find yeast. There's a doctor going around saying cancer is caused by yeast. No, it's not caused by yeast. But yeast are there. Cancer is a cell issue, like everything else is a cell issue. Everything is a cell issue. All disease is cell disease, not yeast disease. Is yeast involved? Yes, of course they are, but secondary. The, co the, the causes of the disease are fundamental. At the cell level, starvation, suffocation, toxification, and all that leads to inflammation. Burden, inflammation, attack, defense, starvation, suffocation, toxification. These are fundamental ideas. Now, once we get these things, the beauty of this, the beauty of this model is you don't need a doctor. Do you think your doctor, do you think anybody in the medical model is ever going to tell you that? Do you think the model is ever going to willingly give up its power? Do you think the IRS is ever going to give up its power? Do you think the legal system is ever going to give up its power? Do you think the government's ever going to give up its power? The federal government? Oh, you don't need us anymore. We got too much technology. Everybody can make their own power now. Everybody can can create their own uh, their own goods from the ground up because we have printers, 3D printers. We don't need the federal government anymore. Goodbye. Here's your money back, by the way. You think that's ever going to happen? No. Never. Simplify. Now, when it comes to simplification in the body, fats are so fundamental. Maybe the key players in the inflammatory process, which is the disease process. They are, certainly the omega-3s and the omega-6s are the key players in inflammation and anti-inflammation. Inflammation means fats. And when I say fats, I mean fatty acids. And this is where processed and trans fats are such a big problem. They're distorted fats. They're broken fats. They're short-circuited fats. Udo Erasmus wrote the book, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill. If you're interested in fats, that's the book to have. Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, Udo Erasmus from Udo's Blend. And it's an amazing book. Everything you want to know about fats and easy to read, too. It's, it should be a reference book in everybody's library who has any kind of nutritional, who is interested in accumulating a nutritional library. That's a must-have book. He says the trans fats are short-circuited fats. And this is really important because there's an electrical nature to fats. Fats are nature's densest source of electricity densest source of electricity. This is the stupidity of a fat-free diet, by the way, or a low-fat diet. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. Take your phone calls as well. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 from the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, Asthma and Allergies, a protective factor in farm milk. How do you like that? What could it be? But milk's bad stuff, isn't it? Well, it turns out that milk from grass-fed animals actually has some pretty interesting benefits. Milk from grass-fed animals has omega-3s, omega-3 fatty acids, and and omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory. So drinking farm-raised, grass-fed milk, or uh, milk from cows that are grass-fed, actually can have some asthma benefits and allergy benefits. It's called the Swiss paradox. In Switzerland, they eat lots of cheese, and they drink lots of milk and do lots of dairy, but they have lower rates of heart disease. And they don't eat a lot of fish. They're mostly eating dairy. 
but they have low rates of heart disease. They call it the Swiss paradox, but milk is filled with fat and milk is a problem, no? Well, guess what? The milk that they're drinking comes from cows that are eating omega-3 grass fed. They're, they're omega-3 grass fed. Omega-3s are incredibly, incredibly valuable. They're hard to find. you got to go out of your way to get these omega-3s. There's so much good literature on it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad literature on it. And by bad, I mean people telling you that there's a problem with omega-3s. Omega-3s don't work. I love that one. They don't work for heart disease. But we gave, uh, we gave uh, all these heart patients omega-3s, and it didn't work. People still got heart disease. Because these things don't work. They're used by the body. They're not drugs that work. They're nutrients that the body uses. And omega-3s have to be in balance with omega-6s. That's a whole nother story. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking fats, inflammation, fatty hormones on the bright side. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. Mary in Oregon, welcome to the bright side. What's up, Mary? Hi. If you have time, I'd like to talk a little bit about what you just said. But um... Which part? I said a lot of stuff. I say a lot of things on this show. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> Sometimes I think I say too much. Sometimes I think I talk too much. You do not. No? Oh, no. Thank you. I've been, wondering, I've been wishing the whole show I was a sponge so I could hold on to all the details. Oh, good. Well, what did you want to share and what did you want to ask and contribute? Help me out here. Okay. Well, the um, first thing is uh, I cannot remember all the details always. I mean, I, I've... I know so much from listening to you, but I can't always know where archives. to go. Archives. That's what the archives are for. And I repeat um, myself, too. So. Yeah, so um, a person told me uh, recently, you can eat foods to alkalize the body. Now, I know from you that you can breathe deeply to alkalize the body. Yes, but that's how the body stays alkaline, with oxygen. It's the oxygen-carbon dioxide balance, the respiratory balance. This is how the body alkalinizes itself. To a certain extent, electrolytes, minerals play a role. That's true. Uh, sodium bicarbonate plays a role. But the fundamental place where alkalinization and acid come, uh, uh, take place in the blood, which is where it's about, what it's about, is through breathing, through oxygen and carbon dioxide. Sodium bicarbonate, by the way, works via carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is an oxygen magnet. This is the balance. Acid attracts alkaline. Alkaline attracts acid. It's all in this balance. And so when you hold your breath, you actually, when you breathe again, you're going to breathe a lot more oxygen. The, all that excess carbon dioxide that's building up from you holding your breath is going to pull in a lot of oxygen. So it's a relationship between, basically it's breathing. Will food do it? Very slightly. Very, very slightly. Minerals, if they get in the blood, will have a, an alkalinizing effect. But it's basically through breathing. That's how it's supposed to be done. But we don't breathe. We, I mean, we do, obviously. We breathe. But we don't breathe correctly. We don't breathe. Imagine if breath was gold, Mary. Imagine if breath was money. Imagine if breath was love. Can you imagine how deeply we would breathe? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What, right? What if your bank account went up every time you took a deep breath to the extent you got a deep breath? You could see the digits going up in your bank account. Wouldn't you keep breathing deeply? That's how we want to look at it. But we don't. We, and it happens very early. We learn to contract our bodies to hold on to things, to squeeze our muscles, to actually tell our body that it's in a survival mode, which will shut down, res slow down respiration, at least will make it more shallow, at a very young age. When we're traumatized, did you ever, Mary, I want to do an experiment with me. And people, folks listening, do this experiment with us, okay? Mary, you there? Yes. Uh, this is what I want you to do. I want you to imagine something really crappy, like your bills or taxes or uh, something that's going wrong in your life. Can you feel how your body contracts when you feel something crappy? When yes. you think something, right? That happens all the time. And those contractions shut down oxygenation. And they cause an accumulation of acid. And we learn to do it subconsciously. You'll do it. You'll, I notice I do it when I'm merging in traffic. If it's like a dangerous thing or, you know, you got to merge really quickly or you got to do a real traffic move. I'll feel my fingers or my toes clenching. You know, it's just a natural reaction. And it happens over and over and over again. And over the course of time, we get these pockets of hypoxia, of low blood oxygen. And this is where acidity builds up. Now, uh, when cells die, they dump off acids. Cell death will lead to acids. Inflammation will lead to acids. This is where acidity builds up. The way you counteract it, the primary way you counteract it, is with slow, deep breathing. 
There's no faster way and no more effective way, and that's the way nature and God intended it. To a small extent, there are some minerals and foods that can do it, but this alkalized diet and eat right for your, you know, alkalinized, eat alkaline foods, it's just a way to sell books. It's just a way to, to sell stuff. Alkalinized water now you have. You know, you don't need that. Remember, the simplest solution is always the best, and it don't get any simpler than breathing. That's the simplest thing you can do. Does that help? Yes, it does. All you right. want me? Do you have time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's going on? What's on? Okay. What's on your mind? So you were talking about the grass fed. Yes. Okay. Um, are my priorities correct? My first priority is to have uh, no mucus or really close to no mucus, and uh, all year round. I mean, not all year round. The, the part of the year where there's not a lot of pollen. I drink the Amasai mm -hmm. uh, with no mucus. Is that interesting? It, the, when the pollen shows up, uh, last year I got this huge mucus hit, so I eliminated the Amasai. And it went away. Until July. So did it go my, away uh, when you did it go away when you eliminated the Amasai and, and the pollen? It, 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 it did. Okay. So are well, my you, priorities correct? Well, you're on the right track here. I don't, I don't know what you mean by priorities, but what's happening is you've got a, some kind of burden on the immune system. Remember the straw that breaks the camel's back, right? Well, that's Pollen. What I do. Yeah, yeah, you got a straw that eliminated it. That's right, Just and that's what's then. happening. But here, I'd be considering, I'd want to make my camel stronger so you could do the Amasai right through it because the Amasai has got good stuff in it. It's a shame that you have to drop it. So let's make your camel's back stronger. All right? You know what I'm saying? Eliminate yeah, some other... that's what my question is. Okay, hang tight. We'll finish up when we come back. We've got to take a break, okay? Well, let me just finish up real quick, and then I'll let you go. Got some calls okay. I want to get to. All right, so you, number one, use nutritional supplements. Zinc and vitamin C, uh, pro, maybe magnesium. Those are three major, major, major immune-boosting nutritional supplements. And you could take a lot of vitamin C, 50 milligrams a day of zinc, picolinate, uh, and then maybe a couple thousand milligrams a day of magnesium. There's others, too, but that's a good place to start. Uh, and then most important thing is, is eliminate other foods that are not serving you that are putting a burden on the immune system. And it could be, it could be spinach. It doesn't have to be a crappy food. It could be spinach. But you've got to find foods that are putting a burden on the immune system. And I would be, as best as you can, eliminate them. Hopefully it's not the amasai. Hopefully it's something like sugar or, or bread or something that's not a really important food. But you never know what it is. And then eliminate that. Hopefully it's not the amasai because that's got some good stuff in there. All right, Mary, I've got to go. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. And if you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, please head over to my blogs, criticalhealthnews.com. We also have videos up. And also, uh, we do the videos every week. So if you haben't checked recently, there's some new ones up there. That's criticalhealthnews.com. You can also head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com, and you can also go to benfuchsarchives.com. If you want to purchase any of our truth treatment products, please go to truthtreatments.com and take, make sure you take a special look at our retinol 5% gel. That's truthtreatments.com. All right, let's go to Marie in California. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, Marie. Hi, Ben. Hey, I, what's up? I use some of your products a lot. I use your... Um, I mean, um, I bought some cream from you, a couple creams. What do you anyway, buy? What I did like you buy? Lot. What did you buy? My, my problem now is that I have problem with uh, inflammation in my body. So I well, have hang on, Marie. Hang on. What, which which truth product did you buy? Um, uh, Geritol. No. Geritol. No, that wouldn't be me. No, no. Not that. I'm just kidding you. What? That's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't worry about it, Marie. Go ahead. So tell me, you got some inflammation going on? Um. Yes, I have egg all over my body, so okay. I have inflammation. So then I went to doctor, and they say that I have um, acrosocyte sentimental weight, ES, short for ESR. I mean, I have inflammation in my body, inflammation in my body. I, just for curiosity's sake, yes, I'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about ESR here in a second, but just for a sec, what did they tell you that it was caused, did they tell you it was caused by? No, they didn't tell me what caused it. Give me a blood test, and they find out that I might. They found that you got uh, uh, your sedimentation. Your your blood cells were sinking. You yeah. had a high sed rate. They call it. One five. Okay. okay. Here's the deal. That's dirty blood. <laughs> That's what I've been calling dirty blood, Marie. I, and they told me to take Renaissance. And I they told you to take what? 
Penicillin? Penicillin? Prednisone. P-R-E-D-N-I-S-O-N-E. Oh, prednisone. Oh, 